Hi, I'm Cynthia Schiller. We're going to talk about should I give up me to not lose you? A lot of times in toxic relationships, we lose a lot of ourselves. And what is the balance that is healthy? You know, how far can we afford to bend our values to preserve a relationship? How far can we go in giving up ourselves to avoid losing our partner? A lot of us long to get back into a toxic relationship. Are, are we losing too much of ourselves? And that's what we really have to look at. How much of yourself can you afford to sacrifice to not lose somebody you love? How do we find the balance between maintaining our integrity and bending our values? Now, most relationships require us to bend to a certain extent, but how much can we bend without a sense of loss of self. There's an inherent paradox in these questions. A truly loving relationship is a relationship where each person accepts and even values the difference between them. If you have to excessively bend your values to preserve the relationship, what exactly are you preserving? You're not preserving a loving relationship since love does not demand that you excessively bend your values. If you're with a narcissist, they will break boundaries. They won't support you. So rather than looking at relationships in terms of bending values to accommodate another person, let's look at it in terms of each person learning and growing as a result of their differences in values. So for example, let's say a lady named Patricia is this highly responsible person who has a strong work ethic. And Sam tends to let things go a lot, which results in their imbalance regarding financial responsibility within this relationship. So Patricia's not happy about this. Does she just accept these differences to preserve the relationship? No, that's not what a good relationship is really about. Since a good relationship is about each person learning and growing from the differences rather than one or both people giving themselves up. So Sam and Patricia need to engage in open explorations of their differences. Within this, they each have beliefs that can be explored. And within this process, new learning occurs and growth is really important that this growth leads to intrinsic change rather than superficial compromise. If you're with a narcissist, they do a lot of future faking, superficial or completely false compromises. The real problem occurs when one or both partners are not available for this exploration and learning. If one partner says, just accept me the way I am or gets angry or withdrawn when the other partner attempts to discuss the situation, no learning will take place. So if you're in a toxic relationship, a lot of times they don't want to compromise. They don't want to listen to your needs and we start giving too much. And it's important to have the right balance. Otherwise you start to lose yourself. So then the other partner either has to accommodate or leave. And unfortunately it's not a healthy situation. So let's say Joe, Joe is an extreme extremely neat person while Julia has a hard time putting things away. Roberta is always on time while Celine is always late. Maggie is a spender while David is a saver. Carl has a high sex drive while Andrea has a low sex drive. Angie is an authoritarian parent while Kurt is a permissive parent. So there's all these different dynamics that can help in relationships. Ronald, let's say he's highly sociable while Greg is a homebody. Depending on whether or not each person is open to learning, these differences can lead to constant conflict, one partner giving in to avoid conflict, or both partners open to learning and growing as a result of the relationship. So the outcome of these conflicts depends entirely upon intent. There are only two possible intentions in any given moment the intent to protect protect against pain or the intent to learn about love so when both or or one of these partners had the intent to protect protect against pain 
then they will find controlling ways and avoid dealing with the differences. And this is really important if you're in a toxic relationship that they try to hide the pain or the shame and it shifts the whole dynamics of the relationship and you start losing yourself. They may argue, defend, withdraw, blame, give in, resist, explain, on and on and on. Each is intent on having their own way. They don't want to compromise. You see that a lot in narcissistic relationships even borderline not being controlled by the other partner or avoiding the other is felt as rejection this always leads to distance and unhappiness in the relationship nobody likes to feel distant or rejected the problem is not the differences themselves but rather the unwillingness to learn and grow from these differences. It's okay to be different. How do we get along in this? When both partners are opening to learning about their differences, these differences become fertile ground for the existing process of personal and spiritual growth and healing. Now, we cannot make another person become open to learning. We don't have that control over others. So if you are in a relationship where your partner refuses to learn and grow from these differences, then we need to be honest with ourselves regarding how much of ourselves we can give up, how much we're willing to compromise our personal integrity, yet still maintain a sense of it. So you can bend and accommodate as long as you do not feel as if you are losing yourself in toxic relationships, that trauma bond and the overgiving and the not getting back or the confusion or the lies, the, the poor communication, we lose ourselves. And it's so important to live our lives. Our partners are meant to build us up, not tear us down. So once you feel that you are losing a relationship or to pre yourself to preserve this relationship, you'll often find yourself so resentful of the other person that the relationship begins to fall apart anyways as a result of giving yourself up. So this is what's so important is when we give so much, resentment can build um, and it changes the dynamics the person isn't willing to compromise or give some of our needs that it, it just becomes toxic and we lose ourselves. We often don't know how to handle it and the tensions start to build. So we have to remember, you know, we're not preserving a relationship by accommodating. We're actually destroying it while losing ourselves. So the key is to be willing to come overcome the conflict and rejection and even lose that other person possibly rather than continue to accommodate when going along with what our partner wants means the loss of our personal integrity. We're not living our own life at that time. And, you know, two people can be together and, and flourish or they can destroy each other and that uh, toxic relationships are with one person has such strong needs that they don't look at it as a whole that the other person has needs. So if you're in a narcissistic relationship, they tear you down to the point that you become so needy for some validation or truth or communication that is true and real, that we, we lose ourselves. And on the emotional and spiritual lever, level, we can afford to lose our port partner more than we can afford to lose ourselves. So if you're in a toxic relationship, once you lose yourself, it's like dead person walking. It's very uncomfortable. It's You can lead into dissociation and trauma bonds and, and problems coping and brain fog that it's really important to have a partner who wants to love you and compromise is necessary. So I hope that was helpful. Please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. One-on-ones are available and I hope to see you in live chat.